Martha went to her and bade her come down into the garden, for there someone was waiting to speak to her. Silent Mary was very obedient. Without a word, she threw her veil around her and followed her sister into the garden. Then Martha retired. Mary was tall and very beautiful. She was about thirty years old. She generally kept her eyes fixed on heaven. If occasionally she glanced to one side where Jesus was, it was only a side glance and vaguely, as if she were gazing into the distance. Even when speaking of herself, she never used the pronoun, I, but always, thou, as if she saw herself as a second person and spoke accordingly. She did not address Jesus nor cast herself at his feet. Jesus was the first to salute, and they walked together around the garden. Properly speaking, they did not converse together. Silent Mary kept her gaze fixed on high and recounted heavenly things, as if passing before her eyes. Jesus spoke in the same manner of his father and to his father. Mary never looked at Jesus, though while speaking she sometimes half turned to the side upon which he was walking. There was more a prayer, a song of praise, a contemplation, a revealing of mysteries than a conversation. Mary appeared as if ignorant of her own existence. Her soul was in another world while her body lived on earth. Of their speech during that interview, I can remember that, glancing intuitively upon the incarnation of Christ, they spoke as if gazing upon the Most Holy Trinity acting in that mystery. Their simple, and yet profoundly significant words I cannot recall. Mary gazing upon it, said, The Father commissioned the Son to go down to mankind, among whom a virgin should conceive him. Then she described the rejoicings of the angels and how Gabriel was sent to the Virgin. And so she ran through the nine angelic choirs, who all came down with the bearer of the glad tidings, just as a child would joyously describe a procession moving before its eyes. Praising the devotion and zeal of all that composed it. Then she seemed to glance into the chamber of the Virgin, to whom she spoke words expressive of her hope that she might receive the angel's message. She saw the angel arrive and announce the coming of the Saviour. She saw all and repeated all, as if uttering her thoughts aloud, gazing the while into the distance. Suddenly she paused, her eyes fixed on the virgin who appeared to be recollecting herself before replying to the angel, and said very simply, Then, thou hast made a vow of virginity? Ah, if thou hadst refused to be the Lord's mother, what would have happened? Would there have been found another virgin? Then addressing her nation, she exclaimed, had the virgin refused, long wouldst thou, O orphaned Israel, still have groaned. And now, filled with joy by the virgin's consent, she burst forth into words of praise and thanksgiving. Rehearsed the wonders of Jesus' birth and, addressing the divine child, said, Butter and honey shalt thou eat. She again repeated the prophecies, recalled those of Simeon and Anna, etc. Spoke with the different personages connected with them, and all this as if gazing upon those scenes, contemporary with them. At last, descending to the present, she said, speaking as if alone. Now goest thou on the painful, bitter way, etc. Although she knew that the Lord was at her side, yet she acted and spoke as if he were no nearer to her than all the other visions just recounted. Jesus interrupted her from time to time with prayer and thanksgiving, praising his Father and interceding for mankind. The whole interview was inexpressibly touching and wonderful. Jesus left her. Relapsing into her usual silence and exterior apathy, she returned to the house.